If you want to support Black-owned and operated businesses in the Grand Strand area and beyond, check out the NetworkConnects.com for a complete list of establishments in our local area. Our network connects Black businesses to community for a wide range of services, products, organizations, and resources that are viable in the African-American community. You'll find a wide range of products and services that'll fit your needs, along with information about events and happenings around the local community. Check out the networkconnects.com, connecting Black businesses to community. The networkconnects.com. Good afternoon, everybody. It gets us every time. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Network Live. I'm April Garner, founder of the Network and host of this Friday show. I just want to thank you all for tuning in with us today. And I have a very special guest joining me today. I'm going to introduce her in just a moment. But of course, I want to remind you all that uh, my, my typical co-host and partner in crime, Dr. Winston D. McIver Jr., he is recovering from COVID, and uh, we are very, very blessed and, and happy to report that he is doing much better, and uh, he is home, still recovering, so we can't really put him to work right away, uh, but I'm sure that he's probably tuning in, and he's probably already doing some research and probably trying to figure out how to tell his story about his COVID-19 experience, and as you know, uh, Dr. McIver and I have been uh, bringing you COVID-19 updates ever since April of last year. And unfortunately, uh, you know, he was affected by COVID in that he became a patient and, uh, you know, just fought the COVID fight and definitely, uh, you know, came out on top. And, uh, you know, he's still battling some things, but he will be back. And of course, you know, just goes to show you that, like I mentioned last week, that uh, no one is exempt, not especially the doctors, the frontline workers, you know, they're all exposed uh, constantly and, and throughout the day and throughout their work. And um, so it can happen to anyone. And so that's why we want to continue to implore everyone to make sure that you remain safe, that you mask up, you wash your hands and you practice social distancing uh, as much as possible because COVID is very real and, uh, you know, we do have some new precautions and uh, information about new strains. And of course, I, you know, will not um, even attempt to do what Dr. McIver does whenever he gives us the updates. But I can tell you that, you know, it's a serious matter. So we got to make sure that we are doing everything we can to stay on top of this. Uh, <clears throat> I want to go ahead and introduce uh, someone who is going to give us some wonderful information about an organization that everyone uh, should know about. And I say everyone because I was uh, kidding with my, my guest today that uh, back in the day, uh, there you know, were several commercials that would mm -hmm. run for the United Negro College Fund. And I remember one uh, where Ray Charles had a song. And uh, for some reason, it was playing in my head today. And I was like, I, I got to find that video. And so um, I'm going to play that video because it just gave me goosebumps. I mean, it was like a, a walk through time when I listened to that. And uh, we're going to learn a lot more about UNCF today with our special guest, Rosalind McGinnis. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me on the show and providing me with an opportunity to share the work that I do and the work that I love. Yes, I, I can tell. I've been working with Rosalind for a couple of weeks now, I guess, and I can tell that she's very passionate about UNCF. And 
uh, you know, the the impact that it has in the black community. And, you know, I've learned a lot of new things about the initiative, some things that really were kind of shocking in a sense, uh, because I think that there are some things that people just kind of perceive about UNCF because it's the United Negro College Fund. But, you know, the help is more widespread than a lot of us know. And so some of the things that we're going to cover today are uh, all about the initiative, uh, Rosalind's job and what she does with UNCF as an area director, uh, the initiative that's being uh, pressed into uh, where where I'm from, which is Ori and Georgetown counties, but also what's happening around the PD region. And so, you know, we'll talk about those things as well. But, you know, more importantly, we, we're going to touch upon, uh, you know, what's important in terms of this funding and why it's so important for us to continue to support this initiative in more ways than one. Uh, you know, we can give donations all day and make sure that the fund is sustainable, but it's the awareness piece that I've learned that really needs a lot of support. We need to, you know, let our, our, our Black students know that there is help, financial help for them as they go off to college and, uh, you know, while they're in school. And so Rosalind's going to talk about all of that today. So Rosalind, before we get into it, should, should I play the clip? So just yes, kind of get them all. You're I, eager to I see remember. it. I remember, but I don't remember the Ray Charles one. Oh I, my goodness! Well, and I might be a little older than you. I don't know. Um, yeah. it's, possi it's a possibility, yeah. but this—I oh, know you. This, know. <laughs> this this clip uh, was uh, evidently a commercial that ran in 1977. So I'm going to go ahead and put my age out there. I was seven years old. Oh, when, I was when, much older than you in seventy. Oh my goodness! Seven years older than you, so I wow. would have been 13, 14. Okay, not too far. Not too far ahead. I started All right. high school in seventy-seven. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let me see if I can pull it up. I hope it plays for me because I was really excited myself about showing this today. Okay. Make sure it's on the screen. You can tell me, Rosalind, whether or not you say, yeah, there it is. All right. All right. Cool. Okay. So here we go. I do remember these commercials. I think we're missing the sound. Really? Hmm. Yeah. Let's see. I don't know why it would be missing the sound. That's weird. Hopefully it'll play because that little boy, I think is Rodney Allen Rippy. Get out of here. Okay. He was a, a, it was a, he did some kind of hamburger commercial. I can't remember. <laughs> Did he do? Um, I'm not sure if that's him. Wasn't King. Well, I don't know why it's missing the sound. That's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Still can't hear it. No, maybe is it? Now I do. Maybe it's because I have earplugs. No. Hmm. It's not doing it. Wow. Yeah, wow is right. Right. The sound didn't work well, but I re that's an old video because we were still headquartered in New York City. Wow. Since that time, our headquarters are now in um, Washington, D.C. So it's, it was a while ago. Oh, my gosh. That was a long time ago. A long time ago. How long has the organization been in existence? We have been around since um, 1944 when James mm. Patterson, the president, Dr. James Patterson, the president of Tuskegee, founded the organization and felt that there was an opportunity for other HBCUs to work together collaboratively. We always mm -hmm. have more power and more um, a greater ability when we work together. And that's mm -hmm. what he recognized. And that's when he founded it. Um, and we've been going strong for now 70, almost 77 years. April almost 77 years. Is our birthday. 
That is absolutely incredible. And so, Rosalind, why don't you tell everyone what your role is in UNCF? My role, I'm an area development director. I'm one of about 24 other colleagues throughout the United States that's focused on helping to raise funding to continue to support our Black students and our historically public, I'm sorry, historically Black colleges and universities that are private. Um, we UNCF is unique in that we serve the private institutions. Um, when we were founded, we weren't able to get any federal support at all. So that was a part of the reason that they established the organization. Mm -hmm. So um, there are in total 101 historically black colleges and universities in the U.S. right now. Um, there are a few of the privates that don't belong to UNCF. And then our sister organizations are the public universities, South Carolina State University, for example, is one of our sister organizations. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how we got started and why. And, and with a lot of support from um, wealthy businessmen and, and folks in 1944 who had a lot of money and recognized the need for equitable education in this country. Mm hmm. And, you know, it's interesting that you described it that way, which is, you know, was the purpose behind it, because there's still that need. Exactly. And and even though we've you know, I'm sure we've made some strides, we still have a long way to go when it comes down to, you know, access and equity. And so, uh, you know, UNCF, it's wonderful that it still exists to uh, kind of bridge the gaps and um, make some things happen for the students. And I think that. Uh, you know, a lot of people have some perceptions about UNCF, aside from the fact that, you know, it only supports certain HBCUs. And what are some of the, the myths, I guess, we can kind of dispel today as far as the support that is offered for students? Well, I think the one thing that I didn't recognize until I came to work in, and serve through UNCF was that we provide scholarships to students at both historically Black colleges and universities, as well as traditionally um, um, majority organizations. So we have students at Clemson. We call our, all of our scholarship recipients, we call UNCF scholars. So we mm -hmm. have scholars at U University of South Carolina. Um, that was one of the greatest myths because I thought you only, you had to be attending an, an NHBCU. Um, the other thing that I did not recognize is UNCF is the largest provider of scholarships to African-American students outside of the federal go government. Every year we give out over $100 million. And it sounds like a tremendous amount of money, which it is. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it, it really only serves 10% of the need. Um, we hmm. typically will have for every 10 students that apply for a scholarship, we have nine individuals that we have to turn away. And it's right. heartbreaking. Um, one of the predominant um, stressors is, is anyone with parents in school, I mean, any parent with children in school or any young person or a person who's getting through college knows it's the financial burden. Mm -hmm. And that's our goal is really to help students get to college but then through college now mm -hmm. and providing those resources. And that's part of our mission. Exactly. So as a student is preparing for college, uh, are they going to learn about the UNCF scholarships while they're in high school? Or, and at what point can they actually take advantage of the scholarships? I encourage every young person between that, the year when you're a rising senior, that you aggressively and assertively and put, time in like it's a job. I'm talking to young people now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Get these scholarships and to, to get them, you have to apply. You have to put in the work. I wish we could just go around and say, here's a check for you. Here's a check. Here's a check. Like Oprah, here's a car. Here's a car. Here's a mm -hmm. check. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. can't do that. Um, the reality though is for those students who, who are about really putting in a lot of effort and it is a lot of effort. Um, there are a lot of opportunities available. So between your junior, well, I'm going to just say as a rising senior throughout your senior year and after you get to college, make UNCF one of those websites that you check often. 
Um, we have a go to our website, uncf.org forward slash scholarships. And, and there are scholarships for everything you could think of. We have 400 different scholarships. So if you're a dancer, if you're in the fine arts, um, I just saw a scholarship for students. Um, the Mars Candy Bar Company just um, did a release. They have um, put out a scholarship for um, students who want to attend culinary school. Oh, and it's awesome. also for adults. We don't mm -hmm. have a whole lot of scholarships for graduate students. And I shouldn't say adults. You're an adult when you're in college. But um, it's open for high school students, college students, and, and adults looking to re-enter the workplace and, and are thinking of going to culinary school. Mm -hmm. And it just came out in December. It's probably still open. I need to check. Yeah. Great opportunity. So these scholarships that are created, you know, are they just based on industry partners saying, hey, I want to create a partnership with UNCF for a particular industry? Or is this something that UNCF actually, um, I guess, seeks uh, in the in the job market to see what they can support? It's a both and. Um, okay. We have companies that reach out to us on a regular basis, especially now with everything that's going on in our world in terms of people becoming more aware uh, mm -hmm. of the continued um, systemic, systemic racism that exists and the inequities that exist. We've had a lot of corporations reach out to us. Um, I think uh, our largest was Netflix provided $120 million for scholarships. Mm. Wow. Uh, 40 million to UNCF, 40 to uh, Morehouse, and 40 to Spelman. Um, Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina has done, uh, I think, multi million dollars to our five historically black colleges and universities. Our, sorry, I'm sorry, our six in South Carolina. So I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of opportunities that companies are coming to us with, but also we go out and seek them. So I, I try to cultivate new relationships, mm -hmm. make people aware of who we are and the amazing work that we do and encourage them to support that work. All right. So uh, one of the things that we've talked about in our um, local committee meetings, uh, you know, that kind of go along with what you're saying is the idea of trying to partner even with some community and technical colleges at some point or even other mm -hmm. schools that, you know, I guess would kind of fit into the scheme of things. And I gave you the example of another scholarship fund uh, that's um, the, the Thurgood Marshall Fund and how that's uh, actually being routed through the local community college that I work for. And so, uh, you know, if there's anyone who's listening or watching, if there's an opportunity for UNCF to do those types of things, how would they, you know, get something like that implemented at their schools? They certainly can reach out um, to me directly, 864-699-0663. Um, <laughs> um, and what Give we me that again. I'll put it on a banner. 864-649-0663. Okay. And um, there are a lot of different ways that um, people can engage if it's an organization or some a group that wants to have a scholarship that's for a specific um, program or specific school even. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the unique things that we do is we really cater our scholarships to what the donor desires. Uh, when you asked about was it just corporations, absolutely not. You, um, there are a lot of people who have benefited from their education that choose to have set aside money and they choose to give back and they create a scholarship in the name of their mom or dad or sister. Mm. And um, it's very specific to that person and very meaningful to that person. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one way. But also um, with groups and organizations that have an interest, um, we were talking about earlier, if there's someone that has a desire to you want to see um, students specifically at a technical school have an opportunity for um, to get a scholarship. We can create it and craft it to that need. That's one of the things I really like about our scholarships, that they are not 
cookie cutter where you must have this or you must do this. It's really, it's really up to the donors, the individuals right. getting the money so that, and they can have some input as well in terms of if an essay is done, having, you can't select by law, the scholarships recipients, but they mm -hmm. can have um, access to essays and the information and, and kind of rank, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, um, you know, we, I, we have a couple of comments in the uh, thread and I just wanted to, you know, share a few. I like to share comments along the way so that you'll know what everyone is saying. And uh, we do appreciate all of you, you know, engaging in this conversation. And if you have any questions, please make sure to drop them into the comment streams and I will toggle back and forth as best I can. Uh, but Kenneth McIver, thank you so much. He says that he gives annually. Great organization. Um, don't thank me. Thank thank Rosalind and you. No, thank you because of donors like <laughs> yes, you, yes. we would not be able to do the work we do. Um, there's a gentleman uh, and um, Harry Reese, and he gives five dollars every single week, and he literally writes a Amazing. check and sends in his money, and we're grateful for him because he doesn't have to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and it all adds up and it makes was, a difference in the life of a student. Absolutely. I know when I was in college, five dollars was like five hundred sometimes, you know. So <laughs> that's the one told me that he's a college yeah. student. I don't know. <laughs> exactly, you know, but um, but you know, that's wonderful because it shows you that no gift is too small. And mm -hmm. you know, it all, you know, like you said, when it adds up, it all makes an incredible impact. Uh, author Tara Hill Stark says awareness is key, and she thought the organization didn't exist anymore. Well, you know, now you know it still yep. exists, and I think that's one of the things that we've talked about as well uh, in our local committee meetings is how to actually beef up the awareness of not only the organization but also just of the giving, so that students can take advantage. So, you know, what are some of the things that uh, you know we as a community can do to help UNCF with with this effort? The greatest thing I think is if you have a young person in your life or you're mentoring young people, which so many of us do, is to go to the website with them and fill out the um, student profile and begin to apply for these scholarships. Mm -hmm. what, what happens, I think, far too often is that um, to, to the person's point, they don't even know we exist. And there are 400 opportunities sitting there um, but it is a process um, and it's, I think, helping to increase awareness, helping a young person say, today we're going to get on this computer, we're going to knock this out. UNCF will in turn email them scholarship opportunities. Mm. And scholarship opportunity, it means you may have to write an essay or you may have to fill out an application and get a letter of reference from a teacher or from a counselor or someone like that, but it's worth putting in the effort because mm -hmm. it helps to alleviate that financial concern. And, and in this time, you, we're hearing all the talk about forgiving student loans. Mm -hmm. We really want to encourage our, as many young people to get scholarship money. It's money you don't have to give back. It's not mm -hmm. a loan. And so really trying to um, encourage our young people and parents to take advantage and especially in, in, in South Carolina as well. That's my market. I'm buying mm -hmm. it. anyone that's, that's my community. Right. Um, and that we can continue to increase awareness. Talk about us. Let people know we exist. Um, that's how I think you can be most helpful in terms of really getting the word out. Okay. So um, someone wants to know how can they give? Uh, so uh, they, they can go to the website. Is there like a donate page or should they contact you? How, how can they give? Okay. There are, um, they can um, go to there. I should have been prepared. They can text UNCF 12, which is specifically for the PD area to, I don't want to give you the wrong number. Give me a second. I'll have you can put that on the screen. No but problem. also you can go to, um, we are part of what's called the Atlanta region. Atlanta encompasses Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee, um, Birmingham. I'm not Birmingham, Alabama and Mississippi. But um, you can go to uncf.org Atlanta and click on the donate page and I'll go in and pull our South Carolina money and make sure it goes into our bucket. Um, but the reality is we as a collective in South Carolina um, give about 
maybe half a million, but we leverage that money. So we give out to our students about last year, about 1.33 million. So mm. it's a good investment. And, and mm -hmm. I think it's a, a great opportunity too, for someone that wants to give back. Mm -hmm. There's a question in thread as well. Uh, how do students who attend a school like Hampton University fit in? Hampton is a UNCF member school, if I'm not mistaken. I'll double check. But one of my colleagues who's over the North Carolina Area Development Director, Tiffany Jones, I'll give her a shout out, is mm -hmm. uh, she is a Hampton graduate. So they are 100 percent eligible for UNCF scholarships. Um, let me back up. They're eligible for the scholarships that meet their needs. So some scholarships gotcha. say you have to be a pharmacy major. Some mm. scholarships say you have to have a 3.2. Um, but they are they're a part of our network of sister organizations. Mm -hmm. And um and, and Hampton is a UNCF member school. We have a um event, a big event there every year. Mm -hmm. And they have a huge alumni network that's very engaged. Right. So um what, you mentioned GPA. What is the, the typical GPA for a scholarship recipient? On average, I would say most of them have a 3.0 maybe, but we, we all we ask as UNCF is that they have a 2.5. Oh, that's doable. <laughs> that's yeah. very, that's I doable. think if you're, if you're in oh, yeah. in money for your education, mm -hmm. try to get a 2.5. At least, exactly. At least. We want At you least. to do much more than that, but mm -hmm. our minimum scholarship is two point five. Um, it's again, it's up to the donors. Many of them will raise it to three point oh, but mm -hmm. um, it, there are a number of scholarships for two point five and um, and above. So please, everyone should be able to apply and find a scholarship that meets their needs. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, you know, I think that information is helpful for people to know as well, because, uh, you know, sometimes there's just a perception that scholarships are uh, only for the, the you know, the, the three fives and four point ohs of the world. And, you know, I think uh, sometimes we make the mistake of assuming that someone who, you know, is making a, a 2.5 or whatever, uh, that they're not a scholar. And that may not be the case. There may be some environmental issues or maybe they're not a great test taker or whatever the case is. But if I think if a student has the motive is motivated and has the drive uh, to go to college and is college bound, one of the things that we should want to do is to remove that financial barrier as much as possible, and then hopefully that'll allow them to focus as much as possible on school and the things that they need to do in order to accomplish their goals. So you know, I when we were talking the other night and, and you said two point five, I was like, wow. I mean, that that should be doable and. Um, you know, if not, then, you know, got to get these students to to a place where they can, you know, take advantage of opportunities like this, even in, yeah. in that way. Uh, Kima Parsley, thank you so much for listening. And uh, no, thank you. It is great information. Thank you for acknowledging. And, uh, you know, we certainly want to make sure that everyone understands uh, that, yeah, UNCF is alive and well and still yeah. in the business of giving. And as a matter of fact, uh, a part of that giving is getting the, the donor support so that it can uh, you know, remain sustainable and uh, that we can, you know, give out these scholarships, but also the awareness piece, I keep going back to that, is going to be a really big deal, especially uh, here in Ori and Georgetown counties, as far as our initiative and, and even across the PD area. So, uh, you know, we, there's like a committee that was pulled together by one of the icons who's watching. And uh, of course, she's given all of us our assignments on what we need to do to make sure that UNCF is on the map in this area. And, uh, you know, what we talked about was how to get the entire community involved. So it's more than just, you know, these individual efforts. It's all about getting the churches involved, uh, you know, the Greek organizations, uh, you know, getting the, the businesses and corporations involved as well. And then just individual giving, just like the example you gave us of the $5 every week. And, you know, every bit of this actually makes a, a huge impact when we pull all those coins together, you know? Uh, and so one of the things that's coming up, of course, is, is your, your gala. And this year they're doing something different. Yeah. Uh, it's virtual yeah. and, and we know why. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? So this year we're, we have 
annually held a mayor's mass ball in Florence for the entire PD area because we all work together collectively. But because of COVID and what's going on in the world, we're going virtual. And this year we're doing an event on March 20th, um, Saturday, March 20th at seven o'clock. Um, it's going to open with an amazing band, um, Mike Stone and the Critical Band. I'm, I'm a follower, so I have to. They're out of Columbia, but he's great people, and and they're amazing. You can see them on YouTube. Okay. Uh, give Mike a plug. I talked to him today, um, but it's really um, traditionally been our largest fundraiser in the PD area, and it's an opportunity for us to celebrate individuals in our community who are doing. Um, work that aligns with helping students to get to and through college. And they, that's what the award part of it is. Mankind Assisting Students Kindle Educational Dreams. Um, it was created by um, Billy Suber Aaron, who is the late, great um, Hank Aaron's wife. She used hmm. to be a vice president at UNCF and was in Atlanta um, and talking about um, an idea for how we could raise money, more money for our students and was talking with the mayor of Atlanta, then um, Ambassador um, Young, Andrew Young. Mm -hmm. And the two of them got together 37 years ago and came up with this idea for a mayor's mass ball. And we have started to replicate them throughout the country. There are now about 16 to 18 of them every year. And on March 20th, 10 of them will be having their um, Mayor's Mass Ball and ours in the PD area will be that night as well. Ten balls happening all at the same time for the same cause. That's exactly. awesome. Yep. That is I'm awesome. Excited. Yeah. I'm excited to see how it's all going to look and be. And I think it'll be a great opportunity too for mm -hmm. people who aren't familiar with um, UNCF to learn some additional things about us. All right. So if someone wants to um, attend or, you know, do something to support the, the mass ball? What, what do they need to do? Um, again, we have, you can go to um, uncf.org forward slash, I think it's Florence MMB, which is Florence Mayor's Mass Ball. But I don't want people to be confused. It's for the entire PD area. When it was set up, um, oh my gosh, 30 some odd years ago, it was set up under Florence. We're going to change it to PDMMB mm -hmm. moving forward, but this should get you to our page. Um, we had a meeting yesterday. If it's not up, it will absolutely be up on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was some kind of technical problem. I asked about it yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, you can go there. There will be more information about the ball. You can always, as I share, call me directly. Believe it or not, I will answer. If I don't, I will immediately call you back. <laughs> um, and, and, and again, it's, it's a great opportunity. And you'll be able to see any of the amazing committee members. I'm sure you'll be here locally from some of them very soon. Uh, I, I'm excited to be working with everyone. It's a, it's an honor and a privilege for me. I love the work I do. I really do. Yeah, we can tell. We can absolutely tell. And uh, so, uh, you know, again, we're kind of in the season of giving for UNCF. And I know that uh, part of what you want to do or will be doing uh, during that night is to acknowledge the donors. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, let's talk a little bit about the donations uh, and, and what, uh, people can do to be a part of that. So there are going to be business and corporate sponsorships right? Uh, and, and at various uh, levels. Mm -hmm. Right. And we encourage our businesses and uh, corporations to support, to help build that pipeline. You, we consistently hear about diversity and inclusion, diversity, mm. equity, and inclusion. This is an opportunity to help those young scholars to prepare and get through college so they can be a part of your pipeline towards building diversity, mm -hmm. equity, and inclusion. And, and there is a tremendous impact on the workplace when you do that. Um, so that's one way we're absolutely asking corporations to consider giving or, or establishing a scholarship specifically to help a student that um, resides in the area of which you're a part. Mm -hmm. Whatever part of the PD it is, it can be as specific as I want a senior majoring in medicine, hospitality and tourism. Medicine. That's this area. Mm -hmm. Tourism. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Whatever it is, there is an opportunity. So I, I'm 
I encourage businesses to really, if you're viewing, and I know you are, uh, <laughs> that you would um, consider um, either making a donation or consider setting up a scholarship. And then as far as individual donations, uh, yes. we're yeah, we're definitely doing uh, individual and, uh, you know, donations from organizations. So, yeah. you know, there's a little bit. Yeah, there's, there's a pipeline for everybody. Yeah. At, um, back in the day. And now I'm really going to tell how old I am. They <laughs> used to have these little cards. And I don't know if you remember where you could put a, a dime or a quarter in the little slots. Mm -hmm. And you would turn into a book and you could turn in money to give and support UNCF. Mm -hmm. Now, that's 100 years ago. I told you I was much older. <laughs> <laughs> But we still had some at the office and I had forgotten. I said, what are these? I said, I remember seeing these. And they told, I remember after they said, I said, oh, I remember doing that. So I think I know what you're talking about. It's like uh, it, you put the quarters in or the dimes or the nickels. And once you fill mm -hmm. it, uh, okay, you that, you know, you raise you know, X, amount of, uh, X amount of dollars after you filled it in. You know, right. that's not a bad idea. We might need to revisit some things. I mean, everybody has changed. Around exactly. the house and in the car and all that. Exactly. That's not right. <laughs> we are open to any way that we can all collectively work together to make this happen. That and, idea. and that's the whole thing about it being community. It has mm -hmm. to be. And that's why there are 24 of us throughout the country because we do it locally. We don't want right. it. everyone's different. Right. Let's talk about the scholarships again for just a second because I want people to understand that. Uh, you know, some of the scholarships opportunities are not just a one time thing. There are some uh, recurring scholarships, correct? Absolutely. Um, it, many of the scholarships are what we call renewable scholarships. So you are awarded um, funding on an annual basis, typically for four years. Um, some recognize that we may have five year students that their program may take a little bit longer. But each um, these scholarships allow students, once you're awarded, you become that scholar and they repeat. Every year you're eligible for the amount that's allotted. Um, I'm thinking of our um, fund two scholarship in particular, you get your freshman year, sophomore year, you get a certain amount and then it increases during your junior and senior year but you're eligible for that scholarship the entire four years. So hmm. there are some amazing opportunities there um, for students. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was, and I also want to ensure that students um, and parents recognize that if you don't get a scholarship, don't feel defeated. Just recognize you didn't get that one scholarship. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I, I have people say to me, I applied to UNCF and I didn't get anything. Don't be discouraged. There are um, some young people that I've talked with who have made this their business and funded their entire four years because she didn't want her um, mom to have the kind of um, to take out parent loans for her. Mm -hmm. It was all about that. Um, and at some point, we may want to have her on the show. She was great. Uh, and, and I think a, that'd be awesome. Yeah, she was mm -hmm. really good in, in sharing that information. So, again, don't be discouraged if you don't get the first scholarship you apply to. And also consider applying to scholarships that are not big name scholarships. It may say Mrs. Mary Ann Simpson has a scholarship for someone who's interested in journalism mm -hmm. or a writer. And she still is giving five thousand dollars to a a, stu a student. She mm -hmm. just may not have a big name like Foot Locker or some of the other scholarships we have. Right. Um, mm -hmm. What I found is our students go with what they know. So if they see Foot Locker or, or um, something big, they'll apply. But we get thousands and thousands of those, and far fewer of the others. So that's a mm -hmm. little hint to try to see if you can get a um, have a greater opportunity. Your odds are better. That's a great hint, as a matter of fact. Uh, and I'm glad that you, uh, you know, can identify some UNCF scholars, uh, at, you know, who could possibly come on the show mm -hmm. and, you know, and talk to us about their experience. We actually have some uh, from the Horry County community. As a matter of fact, when I posted this today, uh, Terry Daniels, uh, who is from Horry, she's from Conway. Uh, she said, you know, I'm a UNCF scholar. And uh, I said, well, we got to have you on the show. So, I'm, you know, I'm sure she'll be someone who can 
share her story as well. And, uh, and you know, not to mention, uh, we also have the Whittemore Community Magazine Live, which uh, airs on Monday nights at 7 p.m. So, you know, we're going to continue to push through this platform and also uh, Edward McQueen's uh, show on Mondays at 7 p.m. so that we can uh, make everyone aware that UNCF is alive and well, still in the business of giving and creating great scholarship opportunities for students, uh, you know, still in the business of inspiring and motivating our young people to push forward. You know, I don't think um, it, it's uh, as a college student, I'm sure you notice, Rosalind, it's one thing to uh, have to be in school or be in class and uh, you're thinking about your academics and then you're trying to, you know, think ahead of how you're going to pay for the next semester or whatever. So at least, you know, there's a, an organization like UNCF that can kind of take the take some of that pressure off of you. But just like you said, you have to uh, move early, move quickly and make sure you're meeting deadlines and uh, submitting all of the requirements for the scholarships and just keep trying. Just keep That's trying. Right. And I think that was a wonderful point to make as well. So I know that you were going to, um, I hope you found it already, but you were going to find the uh, number that people can text. Um, I did not because I started it. looking up scholarships that were oh, out okay. now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always honest because exactly. I, I said, what's out now that's d coming up? And there, this one in particular, because it's for a master's of science or a PhD student, we don't get a mm. lot. And it's given by the Black Winemakers. That's the name of the scholarship. Really? And it's for anyone in who's majoring in chemistry or various fields of agriculture that relate to winemaking. And you said it's for a PhD student? A master's of science and or a PhD student. So that's a rare senior, grad, senior grad scholarship. Or graduate student. Yeah. And that's, we don't have a lot of grad scholarships. Um, then there's... Um, a program for um, National Cooperative of Bank Scholarships. These are ones that are open to students that are in South Carolina um, or nationally. Mm -hmm. so I wanted mm -hmm. to just be aware of that. Um, some of them are specific to a state, but again, uh, like I'm seeing Los Angeles or whatever, but we have some that are specific to South Carolina as mm -hmm. well. So mm -hmm. these cream of nature scholarships. Hair care. Wow. Yeah. For any undergraduate um, attending an HBCU and it doesn't close until March 17th. So again, just go on our site and check it out. Mm -hmm. Minimum GPA 2.5. Um, so again, it's a great opportunity. Um, it's open to any college freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. So that's, that's, those are that's what I'm saying. They're so diverse. I can't keep up with all 400, and they're mm -hmm. more than 400 now. But mm -hmm. I will find that text number right now. <laughs> all right. I got well, I, well, I tell you what. Um, I'm going to take a, a quick break and um, uh, run a little bit of information about the NetworkConnects.com, and that'll give you a, a few minutes to find the number, and then we'll kind of wrap up and maybe remind people of how they can donate and. Uh, how they can find out about the scholarships and just be a part of the UNCF family. So uh, everyone stay tuned and we'll be right back. If you want to support black owned and operated businesses in the Grand Strand area and beyond, check out the networkconnects.com for a complete list of establishments in our local area. Our network connects black businesses to community for a wide range of services, products, organizations, and resources that are viable in the African-American community. You'll find a wide range of products and services that'll fit your needs, along with information about events and happenings around the local community. Check out the networkconnects.com, connecting black businesses to community. The networkconnects.com. All right, Rosalind, and we're back. If you if you can't find it, we can always post it. Yeah, uh, yeah we can always post it underneath the threads later on. And um, of course, over uh, the course of the next couple of weeks or whatever, we're going to be sharing more information uh, as we work towards the the gala and uh, just you know continue the give the the efforts in 
uh, the PD area and particularly Orient Georgetown County. So I'm going to issue a challenge uh, to all of my friends and and work colleagues and uh, you know the organizations that are represented in the network uh, to be a part of this giving. Remember, we are raising money to educate our black students, uh, which means that we we are supporting black excellence. And so, if you want to give, make sure you visit the website, or you can give Rosalind a call, as she said, or you can talk to me, and I will tell you how you can do it. Uh, and we do have a, um, a gift. Uh, I keep saying a gift giving. I think I'm thinking about the, um, you know, how they do the Low Country Day of Giving around here. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, um, you know, we will have a, a donation initiative happening soon that will have an official launch. And so I, I want you all to hit me up and, and say, April, I want to give. How can I give? And I'll get a form to you. Uh, and that's for Ori and Georgetown counties. And uh, remember, no amount is too small. So if you if you have five dollars in quarters. I take it. <laughs> I, I I create a book for you. Exactly. <laughs> okay? Put them put them in the envelope and write your name on the front. That that's all right. Uh, you know that five dollars gonna spend the same as ten. So, uh, you know we we definitely would appreciate that part. And but you know more importantly, let these young people know that these scholarships exist. Exactly. Yeah, and go to the website and check out the scholarship listings and be mindful of those deadlines and, you know, get everything together. And if you need some help, you know, reach out to some educators and other mentors in the area so that we can uh, help these young people uh, to, you know, get their materials together for the scholarships, fill out the applications and all that other good stuff. So, uh, well, Rosalind, uh, we're kind of nearing the end of the show. Is there, is there anything else you'd like for us to know? Um, no, I think we've hit on so many things there's a lot more i'm thank you so much for having me on the show and also to to have students consider um attending our hbcus that's a conversation yes. for another time i did not attend an hbcu but mm -hmm. the kind of love we're and the um help and assistance that students are provided can go a long way we have many success stories where a student may not have done as well in high school as they would have liked. But once they get on that campus and we love on them, it's a whole different experience. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, it was certainly a pleasure to have you here today. And it's been a pleasure to work with you even in these past few days. I know we have a lot of work ahead of us and uh, the icon has already given us our task. We've been voluntold what we're supposed to do. And uh, so everybody is busy, but you know, we're busy for a good cause. And so, uh, you know, this is great. And I appreciate you being here. And again, we're going to have you back. Uh, we're also going to have you on uh, the WCM live on Mondays at uh, 7 p.m. We'll schedule a time and then hopefully we can have some UNCF scholars uh, or, you know, former recipients to come on and, and talk about their stories. And I think that'll help to drive it, drive it all home. So thank you so yeah. much, Rosalind, for taking the time to be with me today. And again, if you all have any questions, uh, you can leave them in the thread and we will be able to get those questions to Rosalind. But also, uh, you know, visit the uncf.org website. Uh, you can probably have most of your questions answered there. And, uh, you know, if, if there's something that you'd like for us to uh, research or investigate before our next uh, broadcast on this topic, please let us know and we'll be more than happy to do that. So thank you all for tuning in today. Uh, Dr. Mack, I certainly do miss you and can't wait for you to be back on here to give us those uh, excellent COVID-19 updates. But you concentrate on getting better and because uh, we certainly do appreciate having you around. And also, I uh, just want to remind everybody, mask up wash your hands, practice social distancing, and let's kick Rona to the curb. Let's do what we have to do to get rid of her so that we, we can move on with life. Okay. So everyone have a safe weekend and God bless. Thank you.